can't let this flashlight thing go. And right in here in giant Sharpie. If you ever wonder what I look like when I get startled, that was it. Well, I decided what I'm gonna do instead is pull power from these battery wires and solder them directly onto these little pins right here on each side. Then we can leave this little controller in here to charge and manage these batteries. Well, now that I'm thinking about that, this thing's gonna be powered up all the time. So I'll need to put another switch on it. Anyways, I'm gonna do it for testing purposes and see if this thing will run at full power that way. Okay, I touched the wires to the output in here. We get full brightness. Only problem is if I connect this directly to the batteries, we're not gonna have any sort of um, under voltage protection. This module will shut off at some point, but it's still gonna create some sort of draw. Whereas if we were pulling power through this USB thing, it has a protection thing built in to keep the batteries from going too low. Now, this flashlight has its own switch, but if I wire this boost, uh, boost converter up to the batteries, it's gonna be bad. What I'm gonna do is take this thing back apart and I'm gonna change the function of this switch into a switch between these batteries and this boost board and then the circuit that's on the light itself is gonna be remaining on all the time. So effectively, if it was still factory, whenever you put the battery in, it would just be on. But we're not using the battery, we're using this other thing, and this switch is going to control the connection between the battery to this. So, using existing parts, I thought about using another switch, but then it would have two switches, and that seemed annoying. So we'll just repurpose this once yet again into something useful, hopefully. Okay, we've got it wired up now. The, uh, this switch now uh, breaks the connection between this controller here, or this battery box. So let me just go ahead and put the cover back on here. There we go. This switch breaks the connection between this and the boost circuit we put in here. I am noticing something interesting though. When I turn it on, it's not full power. I have to push the button f for a split second and then let go. Uh, there we go. Um, so there's a timing component to pushing this button to get the thing to turn on. I think what's actually happening is the circuitry inside this thing is expecting a certain battery voltage in and I think I'm running a little bit more voltage than it's expecting, so it's like cutting down or something maybe. So when I turn this on, it's hitting the other board. There's so much power conversion going on here that's absolutely pointless or needless. So when I turn it on, you have to kind of push the button a couple times to get it to actually power up and do what it's supposed to do. I realize this is a lot of work for just a little flashlight that I found on the freeway, but it's really handy. The way I glued this box on here, here, check it out. It will stand up on the table, then you can point it up in the air, and uh, it's just a handy thing. Like when you're laying on the ground or working on something and you need some light. Actually, that time it worked perfectly. I kind of like fixing broken stuff or repurposing things that used to work and then don't, and now they do again. Sometimes hobbies are more about um, just using time than actually accomplishing a task. Remember this little remote I got uh, for, for this new TV? I don't know if I mentioned the new TV or not. I might have gotten cut out of video. Anyways, I'll put it back in this one. So this is a TV I've been using on this desk here for a while. It's just sort of an old crummy LCD backlit TV, like 720p. Well, I was at Goodwill and I saw this TV here, which is a lot smaller than that one, and it was broken. So I got them to give it to me for $9.99. I, what would happen was you'd turn the thing on, the boot up logo would come on, then the screen would go black. I did a bunch of looking online and found out that there's a little EEPROM chip that goes bad inside these that houses the software to run the thing and, whoops, <laughs> and then it just won't turn on. But then as I started to looking around the, started to looking around, I started looking around trying to find the part I need to fix this thing. I came across another post. Something about when it's been unplugged for a long time, you have to leave it plugged in for a half hour before it may turn on again. And, um, well, this thing kind of ruined the content. The boot up logo always came on, that wasn't an issue. But after this, the screen goes black. But as you can see now, 
it boots up the rest of the way and appears to work just fine. <laughs> um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about a nine-dollar TV, but I was hoping to get a video out of taking this thing apart and repairing it. Uh, so I'll have to figure out something else to do now. It has a sticker on the bottom that just said remote. Well, they were covering up the Vizio logo. This is not a factory Vizio remote. They claimed it was, but there are no buttons on this to access the menu on the TV. That's the reason I got it. I can change volume and like adjust the zoom level and change the inputs, but that's it. You can't do anything else. And it has this weird play pause button, play pause button. But then I realized I have this LG G7 tablet and uh, it actually has an IR blaster on it. So I'm programming it now. Ha, look, I hit the settings button and we get a menu now, see? That's all I was trying to do. But instead, I wasted like $12 on a stupid remote. I mean, I guess it works, but I, I forgot all about this. Let's see now if this thing will actually uh, control the TV and change the settings I want. Sort of the adjustment dial here now, so I can... Oh, look at that. I can change the settings. Oh, this is awesome. Classic, jazz, flat. Okay, rock, I guess. Go into setup. Oh wow, this thing has picture in picture? I did not know that. It's always nice when you realize you spent 12 or $13 on something that you totally didn't need to whatsoever. But, I mean, it's quick and easy to use just for turning it off and on. I don't have to like, reach all the way over here. <laughs> uh, first world problems. <laughs> Another thing I really like about this tablet is it has the old school TV off animation when you turn it off, check it out. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> I don't even know if they do that on phones anymore. I mean, I've seen newer versions that kind of do it, but it's not the same. This one actually looks like an old cathode ray tube television turning off. It's not just a dumb animation. It like flickers and squishes and like, I don't know, that's just sweet. <laughs> yeah. Today we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, swapping around of things. I finally settled on the two chair model that I'm going to use on a daily basis. We've got the, uh, the new bounder over here. Uh, once I get the tires and everything installed on that, which should be in a week or two, it's gonna be my daily use chair. And then if I need a chair to work on stuff or sort of utility chair, if I'm doing something that might damage a chair, we've got the steampunk chair here. This is gonna be my utility chair. But what I need to do is put the easy lock bracket back on this chair so that I can drive the van with it. I'm not 100% sure with the van situation if I'm going to be uh, getting rid of one of them or getting a new one or what exactly yet. We should be able to get the bounder so that I can drive the van from that chair. But in the meanwhile, I'm gonna get the easy lock bracket for this and then also my Amy Systems chair that was here, I'm taking it back to the storage unit and swapping it out for the purple Amy Systems chair. It's actually been stored out in the van. That's the purple one I've been talking about for a while that there's a viewer that wants to buy it from me. So we're finally getting to that project. I've got everything I need, just need maybe an afternoon to assemble it and it should be good to go. So what we're gonna do is go swap out Amy Systems chairs and then this small little soccer chair right here. I was attempting to put the big metal guard on it, but that guard was designed for another chair, so it's not gonna work on this one. But we're gonna take that back to storage. And I, I've i got an easy lock for this chair, but it's mounted on that other C300. I know, lots of chairs, don't try to follow along. <laughs> but it's the one that I accidentally tipped over in my old apartment when I was trying to swap the easy lock on it before. I was attempting to use this broom handle to sort of lean my chair over onto this box, wooden box thing. But then <laughs> I just wound up putting the whole thing on its side. I guess this will make it easier to install this. Um, anyways, I'm gonna bring that back here. And then we've got a ceiling hoist that will be very convenient for getting the bracket off the bottom of that chair. So we're taking two chairs and we're bringing two different chairs back. Then once I get the easy lock bracket removed from that, that one's going back to storage and probably something after that. I have not yet decided what I'm gonna be doing with this Frontier V6. 
I paid a lot of money for this stupid thing a couple of years ago and it's been nothing but problems. You may have noticed too that I don't talk about it anymore. It's the chair that shall not be named. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing with that. I'm into it. I mean, I paid 15,000 for that thing. Like, I, I don't wanna just give it away, but at the same time, now that I have this bounder, I don't need it. So still trying to figure that out. It might be for sale. If you're, well, I was gonna say, if you are local and you want a chair for a good deal, hit me up, but I don't know on that yet what I'm doing exactly. But anyways, it's like 12.30, I need to get going because I gotta get all the way over to storage, get everything swapped and get back before traffic gets bad. Uh, so yeah, travel vlog. <laughs> Oh yeah, and if anyone wants a tricycle, um, you're more than welcome to it. I was gonna make it into an RC car project, but I already have another RC car project I'm working on. It's that Mark Cart Rascal thing, so it's all complete. I just don't need it at all. what we just got here to storage there's a note on the pin pad saying that the exits broken huh I don't understand how like they can just keep raising my rates and it's totally fine but then they can just not worry about keeping the facility working the way it should Maybe I should start using super glue on that sensor so it becomes a little bit more of a problem. Of course, if I'm damaging stuff, you know, that's not good. Shouldn't do that, but... What I had been doing is just putting duct tape or something over the sensor when I try to leave. That way I can actually get out of here. So I guess there's the concept... Oh, I should leave that running. I guess there's the concept that after a while me complaining about something I should either stop complaining or do something about it in this case doing something about it would be moving but uh, I don't know I just feel like I pay these jokers a little over 600 bucks a month <laughs> and uh, what are you gonna do I guess uh, yeah so we're here at storage now time to do some uh, moving around of things an interesting side note, I have automatic bill pay set up at this place so that it just pays off my debit card every month. Well, I had to get my debit card replaced because uh, someone decided to try and use it at a Walmart online back east somewhere. So I got a new card. I updated it. But for some reason, the two units, while they are separate accounts, they're supposed to be the same billing account. Anyways, one of them didn't automatically pay itself. So they called me to complain and moan, like, oh, when are you gonna pay your bill, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'll pay it right now. I didn't know there was a problem. But also, when are you guys gonna fix the ADA access issues to your office? And I was met with an instantly much worse attitude. <laughs> um, so it's just interesting that they want their money, but they're like, oh, well, we're, we're, we're trying to get people here to look at it, and it's, it's a long process, and this and that, and I'm like, no, it's not. You call the glass company first off, have them fix that mail slot so it's not flopping in the breeze. Then you get a contractor out here and get a bid for fixing that threshold. I would think 30 days at the very most. I haven't gone through my video history to look and see how long it's been since that door damaged my chair trying to get through it but they don't even have a disabled parking space in this facility. Again, I'm just kind of complaining. I, uh, I should probably shut up at some point, but I don't know. 
Just thoughts going through my head, I guess. That's why God gave us nicotine gum. <laughs> Actually, I lied. I That makes it sound like I'm using it recreationally. It's for the Tourette's. It actually helps. They've finally gotten some studies done. There's finally been some longer term studies that the data is coming in on. And uh, just nicotine is actually helpful for some neurological issues as far as cognitive impairment and Tourette's and some other things. But anyways, enough talking. We need to get in and out of here as quick as possible. It's 1.30. And I noticed traffic is already starting to stack up on the freeway, so let's get this done. Okay, we've gotten the chairs out of here. I've pulled the ones out of the storage unit that we need. That's the purple Amy Systems one there that we're getting ready to go. Still got the uh, generator Pulse 6. And this is a C300 I was using in the last apartment. This one has the easy lock bracket that I need to take off on the bottom. This is the Amy Systems one we're dropping off, and that's the small chair for soccer we're dropping off. Right now though, I need to plug this thing into power for a few minutes. I've got an inverter in the back of the van and I just fired up the van's motor. The batteries on this are not very good and uh, even 10 or 15 minutes of charging is all it's gonna need at this point. But I've got more chairs than the other storage unit, but uh, we've got a super terrifying old school TDX Invicare chair there. That thing is fast and uncontrollable. Then we've got the off-road chair that used to be a Jazzy 600 that I built. Swapped on Invicare Electronics onto this one. So I shouldn't have turned that on. The power button doesn't always work. I have to unplug it from here to turn it back off. There we go. Then we've got my soccer chair, which is the quick ES626. And there's another S626 back there that has a bad motor. Then our M300's over here. That was the second power chair I ever got. Not sure what I'm doing with that. And I think there's a little three-wheeled scooter back there. Um, yeah, anyways, that's what's in this unit for now. The other unit has a few more in it, but uh, all right, let's get this bar or uh, generator plugged in and charging for a little bit and get the rest of the stuff moved around. All right, we have everything pretty much loaded up now. Got this chair so I can sit in that while I'm working on the other ones. It's gonna be a little bit tight getting in here, but I think, I think I've got it covered. Let's see here. Okay, I think if I back this lift out just a little bit, I should have enough space to squeeze through here. Maybe. Yeah. This is going to be tight. Okay, made it in here, just barely. Getting back out of this thing might be a little bit of a problem, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Of course, both of these chairs that I picked up um, have the batteries disconnected and the seat elevators are raised. So it makes it a little bit more tricky <sighs> trying to move them around, but I think we're good. Got everything swapped around, got some parts I needed. So uh, let's go get stuck in traffic. These people are not very intellectually sophisticated because they apparently think that a name of Lynch is the same, as, the same thing as using the word that is used to describe hanging someone from a rope. Portland's an interesting place. There's a whole debate on the radio today on this talk show about some people that donated some land for a park. Their last name is Lynch, but there's some people, there's some people objecting to it because the name Lynch uh, is also a word for something else. Interesting though, because also in Portland, there's a Hooker Street uh, and a bunch of other names that are just names. I don't know. I mean, I don't really get into politics, but that just seems like, uh, interesting. We'll say that. I managed to acquiesce the phone number of the office here at this place. It's not normally published, but I'm going to try calling that and see if they can open the gate for me. Cause I don't, whatever. Public storage Kelly, can I help you? Hey, uh, would you be able to open the gate so I can get out? 
Yeah, sure. Thanks. Well, there you go. I guess when you come here during business hours, it makes things work better. They just have to push a couple buttons on their computer, I think. Ah, success. That'll do, pig. That'll do. I've got these chairs back here tied down, so hopefully they won't move around too much. It's the nice thing about this van is it has the uh, the E-track all over the floor and the walls and everything else, and I've got a ton of straps that link into it. Okay, here we go. I do believe my search for the perfect power chair is concluded. A lot of these chairs I have in storage were for power soccer and other ones were ones that I got just in an attempt to modify stuff and make something that works for what I need. But I think between the steampunk chair and the new bounder, I should have everything covered. The bounder, I'm getting some other tires for it that actually have a crazy amount of tread on them, but they're a little bit more narrow. They should work fine for indoor use, but also they will work for off-road use and I can swap the tire, bigger tires back on if I need to with just a minimal amount of work. So I should be able to sell the Frontier, I think, and a lot of these other chairs that I have, except for a couple of them we're using for power soccer, but uh, it's kind of a good feeling. I can finally start to get rid of stuff. I know I've been trying to do that for a long time, but it just hasn't happened. Now though, since I'm squared away, I don't need to keep hoarding all these parts and chairs and stuff. made it back. Now this is what we call shooting the gap. I have to uh, leave the lift out just a little ways. Otherwise there isn't enough room to get around this chair and the edge of the lip and the edge of the lip on the lift. So we got to just kind of do one of these sort of things and hope our rear caster wheel doesn't get doesn't get caught in that gap. Oh boy. Safety. Ah, there we go. Made it. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, leaving the engine running in this van though because I'm still running uh, the two battery setup in this thing. Hang on here. Ah, there we go, neutral. I'm still running the two battery setup on this van with uh, some old crummy 22 NF wheelchair batteries. And they're, um, well, they're not the best thing in the world. So if you run the lift up and down too many times, it's gonna go dead. So just, uh, you know, unloading wheelchairs with the assistance of uh, fossil fuels. Taking advantage of the ceiling hoist here, basically tipping this thing up just enough so I can reach around the sides and uh, get to the bolts for the easy lock that's under here. Uh, probably gonna pull the tires off. Don't worry though, I'm not gonna get underneath this thing because obviously 
I don't know if it's Harbor Freight, but you never trust this sort of apparatus with yourself underneath it. But uh, this should make things a little easier. Okay, I didn't, I didn't film the other part, but we got the bracket off of here. It's on the bottom of this chair now. So we need to put these bolts back in that holds the frame of the chair together because the bolts that the easy lock goes through also holds the motors onto the battery box. Okay, let's go test and see if this thing locks into the van. There's no reason that it shouldn't work, although I shouldn't jinx it, that easy lock bracket originally came on this chair. All right, it's a little bit dark in here, but let's see, move my feet so I can see. Should clamp in. Haha. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, that's great. The nice thing about you uh, using this chair to drive the van is it's a lot lower. I actually have some space above my head. The C500 has an easy lock on it, but uh, it's it puts me in kind of a different position and my head's a lot higher. So it's nice having this thing uh, back in the works. There we go. Awesome. Kind of interesting. Because I have this C300 sitting here with the seat elevator way up in the air and no batteries in the chair, I thought it'd be a lot easier to move it around if the seat elevator wasn't way up in the air. I don't know if you've noticed, but all these Promobile chairs have a giant wrench that is tucked away in the back of the chair. And this is designed for lowering that seat elevator although I have never actually used it until now. Let's put this back. Turns out it's a little bit of a pain. You have to remove the seat pans. I got lazy and just left one of the bolts attached. That's why this is just kind of like hanging here. The other problem is, if you notice this chair, there's a little bit of tilt right now. Well, you can't adjust the tilt without batteries either. And when I jammed this wrench, down into the hole that connects to the seat elevator. Yeah. It didn't fit. What I had to do was actually loosen the giant six millimeter bolts that attach the seat to the frame so that it could rock back just a little bit. And that gave me enough clearance to get this thing down in there. Now, turning this is not easy. You're actually turning the entire drivetrain, the big screw, the belt, and ultimately turning this motor that's down here too. It does work, albeit very slowly. But as you can see, this chair is slowly lowering back down. You probably can't see it because the camera's not on a tripod. I'm not doing a time lapse. But anyways, uh, there you go. It is possible to do. I've... Uh, First time I've ever done it, but this giant Allen wrench actually does have a purpose. I just passed a sign that said this trail is 40 kilometers long. That's four zero. Um, that seems like a long trail. That would be 24.85 miles. We might have just found the place that I can do the 50 mile range test on my chair. 